Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It wasn't a great P&L day for me, but I did develop my trade management plan a little bit and I'm going to show you in today's video the live trade of the losing trade that I took. I'm going to actually show you what was captured live on camera was me adjusting my management style and I'm just going to go through exactly what happened in AMD. So if this is your first time stopping by, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button, maybe the like button if you get value out of this video. But what I'm going to do is break down this video and show you how I trade AMD and kind of talk about why I trade it every morning and show you this live video where I show you both my entries and unfortunately my stop outs and I'm going to explain the exact change that I made to my trading plan so that if you're struggling with your trading plan, maybe you could implement something similar. You can check it out. You can see what you think. Let's dive into this. And before we do, actually, let's roll the disclaimer, just explaining that I'm a guy that likes to trade stocks. I'm not certified in anything, so don't take my advice. I'm just sharing my experience. So with that, let's dive in. AMD right here, pushing down at the open. And as many of you know, I watched that 15 minute candle. You can see the low, you can see the high. Today I was five cents above and five cents below looking for good tight entries. I actually got really good fills today and it's been encouraging because I've had two days in a row now with really good fills from, from TD Ameritrade. Last week was a disaster. This week has gotten much better. I don't know why, it might be because I'm getting maybe triggered a little later than normal, but as you'll see in this first video, or in this first trade, I was triggered right out of the gate. I'm gonna play that right now. So I was five cents below this low, looking to get short, and when I hit this button, boom, you can see right out of the gate, it pushes down, I get triggered, and then it just surges right there. And you can see it was a slightly slow, like there was just a little bit of a delay. I did get triggered in, and I knew I was in, I was just waiting for that notification to play out. If you don't know what I'm talking about in terms of slow fills with Thinkorswim, I'm just going to pop this video up right here. Check that one out real quick and then come back over here and you'll understand a little bit more about what I'm talking about. But as I hit play here, you can see we get down. I'm up almost 500 bucks, 570 I think at one point. And this is only in the first, like there's 546 on the P&L and um, you know, we're only... 55 seconds into the entire trading day. So this one really lurched out of the gate, really hard to the downside, triggered me in, took us all the way down. And then what I'm gonna be doing in the future now, as far as modifying my stop loss is, once I see 1.5R to 2R on the P&L, I'm just gonna nudge my stop loss to break even. And I had someone recommend in the Facebook private group, about moving that stop loss to break even sooner. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that once I see 1.5 to 2R, which is what we got right here. That was between 1.5 and 2R. 2R for me would be $600. I'm risking a $300 R on each trade. So I technically would have moved this to break even, which would have been 91.55. And then I can just let it play out and execute the rest of my mechanics. And what you'll see in this trade is I was up really nice even in the 570s for a second, and then it just came barreling back. So 91.55 would be a break-even trade. Oh, and I had multiple opportunities to, to do something if I wanted to, but it wasn't my trade plan, so I did not act on it. I let it play out, and as you can see, it pushes all the way back up. Now, in here, I would have already been stopped out at 91.55, but I hadn't made that adjustment yet. And as this came back up, and I actually got green again for, for a short period, but then it turns back on me. It's showing that same bullish candle, just like we talked about yesterday. When these candles start to form with these long lower wicks, it's just telling us a story. And this continues to push down and up and just kind of float, not really going anywhere. Volume's insane though, volume's great. You can see over here, over a million shares already. Really tight bid ask spread. It looks like it's two pennies right there. So then it pushes back up, takes me red again, and then ultimately is just going to kind of whack me and, and knock me out for a one R loser. But multiple attempts, multiple pushes beyond three, 350 on the PL. So if I would have moved to break even, this could have been a scratch trade. I like to wait to 2.5R before I address possibly taking half off the position. But you'll see here in just a second, it's going to pop back up. It's going to take me out. 
So that's trade number one. That one knocked me out. It was unfortunate because I did see almost 2R on the PL. So you start to think, oh my gosh, if I'd have just taken it. But if I would have taken it short of my normal goal and then it went 5 or 6R additional, I would have missed that whole move. So for me, I get a lot of questions of people asking me, why not just take the profit that you have? And my answer to that is because I like to execute a pretty rigid and simple plan in that when I lose, I lose one unit. When I win, I make two plus units. And that's what I stick to. That's been profitable for me as this is trade number 128 live, like not including back tests. I back tested this a couple hundred times and now I have 128 live trades and my, my metrics and statistics are just holding up there. So I'm sticking to that plan. I am in a losing cluster and yes, it's frustrating. You don't really, you know, you just got to wade through it. You got to get through the cluster and get on to greener days. I just went through a period where I had seven green days in a row. So it's just going to come in spurts. You're going to have a cluster of losers. You're going to have a cluster of winners. I try not to get too caught up in, in either side and just roll with it. So you're going to now see trade number two come in and I'm triggered there. This one actually looked a little more promising. This one we got pushed up pretty good and the, you're going to see me make the adjustment on this trade. What I do is I go ahead and I adjust my stop loss from 1R loser to break even. And I only do that once I get to that 1.5R to 2R. Because when I went back and looked at some more of my trades, reviewing it on my TraderView.com account, I noticed that if a, if a trade goes in your favor significantly, which 1.5 to 2R I think is a significant move, if that happens, then if it comes all the way back on you, I think that's really telling you something. I think the price action is telling you that this isn't just a little pullback. This is a significant reversal in the other direction. And you'll see right here that we actually got into the second candle and I'm just waiting for this high to get knocked out. So I'm kind of waiting around and finally it happens and it actually looks promising. It kind of pushes higher, gets us into the 500s again. But as you can see, if I combine the downside, the short side, and now the long side, I had $1,000 on the P&L. So that's why the thumbnail says 1,000 to minus 300 because you're gonna see I had a $1,000 profit, but right here, I just moved my stop loss. So that stop loss movement is now at break even, just over break even in case of slippage. And now I'm just waiting for it to go, just wanting it to just push higher break that high, continue to the upside, but AMD has been sort of in a sideways trend and it's just been very wicky and sloppy. And so I wait around on it, I wait around on it. We're in the 400s, 450. You know, it would be easy to slap that flatten button and call it a day, but I got to stick it out. I got to get my winners to the, to the finish line. And right about here is where the party ends. And it's okay because I made the adjustment. And the important thing is, after I took this trade off, and you can see I had $12 on the P&L because I put it like a penny or two over the, the, um, the actual break even in case I got some slippage. The thing that I'm interested in is when you get this play, and so for example, for this trade, it came back, I moved my stop loss to break even. And one thing I want to be very aware of is I don't want it to touch stop me out and then immediately reverse and go in the, in the other direction. And you're going to see what happened here was after I got stopped, which was right in here, it continued to the downside. So I did save myself one R by making that adjustment. So I'm happy about that. And I've officially put that in my rules. 1.5 to 2R, which for me is $450 to $600 on the P&L right now for the month of December. If I see that value on the P&L, I'm going to move that stop loss to break even. Then it becomes a free trade. It becomes a risk free trade. And then I can allow it to run. Then if it goes to 750 on the PL, which is 2.5 R's for me, then I'm going to take half the position off and then let the second half of that position try to continue on while maintaining my stop loss at break even. The issue I've been running into, and, and I really want to thank everyone in the free Facebook group for all the encouragement and suggestions of tweaks that I can make to my management style. 
I was bringing my stop loss to 2R once I saw it go beyond 2.5R, and it was just too tight. It's not enough breathing room. But break even is nice. I can take half the position off at 2.5R, which locks in 1.25R, and then I'm, I'm locked in at the, at the break even, so I can't lose money, and I've already booked 1.25R, then I can just let it kind of go. And then if I can get it to go beyond, you know, closer to 4R, 4.5, 5R, then I can take that second half off down the road. A lot of my trades that get to 2.5R, lots of them get to 4R. So I'm trying to find the right way to stay positive, stay in the game, keep pushing through, but reach that 4R level. Get to that point to be able to take profits there. If I take things off too early, then a cluster of losers can really backtrack your month. So my month has changed a little bit because I've had the double loser yesterday. I've had the single loser today. I've had a sort of a cluster of losers. So we'll see how things work out in terms of monthly totals here because we only have two more trading days. And as you all know, I'm going to do a full monthly recap on the month of December where I'm going to break down all the trades. I'm going to show you all the profits, all the losses, the total number of trades. And I'm even going to show you this interesting statistic, which is sort of a max move in your favor and a max move against you within the trade. TraderView.com gives you this statistic. They call it the MFE and the MAE. And those numbers just tell you how profitable you got in the trade before you either won or lost. And then there's a, a way to look at how far against you did it go. So you entered a trade. What's your average drawdown within the trade? Not, not after the trade's closed, but while the trade's moving. And it's a really helpful metric because it can kind of tell you if your R values are in line. And I can get into that more maybe in our next live stream or when I'm talking about the Trader View December recap coming up right after the first of the year. So I want to hear about your trades today. I, I'm curious to know if any of you got whipped around in AMD. It's just been a sideways slog fest for me. And as you can see, if I zoom out on the 15-minute chart, I mean, ever since the 21st, AMD's just kind of been moving sideways. And I also thought, you know, one thing you could take a look at is if you are seeing a sideways trend in the name that you want to trade, could you reduce your R requirement and say, hey, you know what, I'm actually going to take profit at one and a half R's or 1.75 R's instead of two and a half. Sort of adjust that expectation until you start to see something like this, until you start to see movement in a direction. When you're moving sideways, it can be very whippy and things can bounce and just be indecisive and really make it a chore to trade. Now, right now, if I look at how this is playing out on AMD, if I tighten this up a little bit, you can see that at the bottom here, I'm gonna actually draw a line. Let's do a quick analysis. This is a little improv here, but I just wanna do a little something. If I draw a line right there, you can see we've just been playing within those boundaries, right? And then today, we actually broke down and now we're retesting again. So this support area that was sort of a um, sort of a boundary of this range, if I draw another line in here, I guess technically we could kind of say, you know, we've been in this range for a while and now we've broken below it. So I'm going to be curious to see if tomorrow is a winning trade and if it's in fact in the short direction because we broke down. I'm going to watch that, see what happens. I'll be curious to see if this closes outside of this range. If it pushes back inside and closes again, I'm going to be aware of that for tomorrow. Um, and maybe at some point I can implement an R sliding scale so that when we are moving sideways, I can pull back that R expectation. And on days that we're outside of that and moving either up or down, I can adjust my R expectation to take advantage of more movement and more volatility. But we'll see how that plays out. Comment below. Tell me what you traded today. Great job yesterday of sharing what tickers you were trading. I want to hear more of that. I want to hear about your trades so we can problem solve. Thank you for stopping by. Hit up the banner on the, fa or on the uh, YouTube banner. Hit the link for the private Facebook group. Come over and join us. It's about 200 of us talking stocks. We'd love to have you. And um, as always, any questions you want to post, drop those in the comments below. And we'll see you tomorrow.